Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, I'm going to tell you a little fishing story. What, you say? A fishing story on Washington gun law? Yeah, it's a little fishing story that ended up all the way in front of the United States Supreme Court. It's a fishing story that has a lot more to do with how much power are we really willing to give executive agencies. And it's a fishing story that has a lot to do with all the alphabet agencies, not just the ones that are subject to the suit in hand. And it's a fishing tale that could really, really, and forever change the ATF's power to do anything. So today, Let's spend a few minutes, let's connect the dots, and let's talk about the case that could crush the ATF. Okay, so the case we are talking about today is Loper Bright Enterprises v. Ramondo. This is a case that was recently argued before the United States Supreme Court. Many of you are wondering why on God's green earth are we talking about a fishing case on a gun law channel? Excellent question, let me connect the dots. You see, the issue at hand was that the National Marine Fisheries Services, as well as the EPA, were so gravely concerned with American fishing companies going out and overfishing, going over their quota, that they needed to put inspectors on board of every single fishing vessel. And because the need was so great, yeah, you see the same alphabet agencies also demanded that the fishing companies themselves pay to have their inspectors on board. It's almost like you having to pay a private fee to have a police officer follow you on the freeway to make sure that you're not speeding. Now, you sit there and say, well, how on God's green earth could the United States government get away with doing that? Well, you see, the agencies in question here, when they got the opportunity to interpret their own regulation, said, well, this is obviously what Congress intended to happen. Therefore, we interpret it as you requiring this. Well, that is a doctrine known as the Chevron Doctrine. It comes from the case of Chevron USA v. Natural Resources Defense Council. And it is a case in which the Supreme Court gave an administrative agency a couple of inches to kind of interpret its own statutes. But shockingly, when you give an executive agency an inch or two, yeah, they will take a couple of miles. And that is exactly what's happened. And now we have this phenomenon kind of known as the fourth branch of government. We have this phenomenon known as the runaway government agency. And what the Chevron Doctrine has allowed any alphabet agency to do, including the ATF, is allow them to legally serve as the fox which guards the hen house. It also allows these agencies, since they are now interpreting how these rules need to be enforced, to change that interpretation on the whim or following an election. But you see, the bigger issue is that this doctrine strips you, the American citizen, of your representative government, of your power, and of your rights. You see, what you're doing is, is you're allowing an executive branch agency tasked with enforcing the law to also serve as an Article III branch and interpret the meaning of the very laws in which they are enforcing. And so what it turns out to be is while the Chevron Doctrine may have started as giving an administrative agency a slight bit of discretion to interpret their own regulations, it is now turned into an all-out, complete, full frontal assault on the separation of powers doctrine. And there is no alphabet agency anywhere in the United States which has abused this power more than the ATF. And it currently appears, at least if you try to listen to what justices of the Supreme Court have said before about the horrific administrative state or based upon some of the questions that they asked during our oral arguments on this particular issue, it would appear that the United States Supreme Court is essentially poised to either neuter and or completely eviscerate this doctrine. And we've begun to see the crumbling of this already. Take, for example, the matter of Cargill v. Garland, a challenge to ATF's decision to suddenly redefine bump stocks as machine guns, despite the fact that Congress took no legislative action whatsoever. And in joining this rulemaking order and finding that ATF far had exceeded its scope, the court wrote, ATF, in promulgating its final rule, attempted to take on the mantle of Congress to do something with respect to gun control. But it is not the province of an executive agency to write laws for our nation. That vital duty, for better or for worse, lies solely with the legislature. 
And of course, this is not the only example in just recent years of the ATF doing this, because following the playbook that was drafted into the Trump administration for the bump stock ban, along came the rule on firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Then along came the rule on unfinished frames and receivers. Then along came the rule on forced reset triggers and wide open triggers. And along comes a new rule on what it means to be engaged as an FFL in that business. Essentially, everything that the ATF has done since the beginning of the bump stock ban has been the product of the Chevron doctrine. But as I mentioned earlier, there appears to be many justices ready to send this doctrine to its grave. Consider what Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote on a separate opinion. The Chevron doctrine deserves a tombstone no one can miss. Justice Samuel Alito called the Chevron doctrine an increasingly malign precedent. Justice Brett Kavanaugh has commented on the Chevron doctrine as a judicially orchestrated shift of power from Congress to the executive branch. And then, of course, Justice Clarence Thomas in the matter of West Virginia versus EPA was quoted as saying, the potentially unconstitutional delegations we have come to countenance in the name of the Chevron deference has emboldened the EPA to exceed its statutory authority, leaving all of us alarmed. So yes, this little fishing case actually stands for a much, much larger proposition. The bottom line is, is that Loper Bright Enterprises v. Raimondo has the ability to tie both of ATF's fighting hands behind its back. We're going to go ahead and link everything up down below so you can geek out on it for yourself. We expect a ruling from the United States Supreme Court sometime in June. Obviously, we'll let you know when that comes out. In the meantime, if you guys got any other questions about this, or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everybody remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.